Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome back to another map of the day. And today we're going to be looking at the map Amazonia, which is this map here. So basically the concept of this map is supposed to be black forest with a river down the middle. And we can see what the map looks like here. We have uh, players here and here separated by team with this river in the middle. See the river contains a lot of fish and provides some shallow crossings for land units to pass by from one side to the other. Uh, when we're looking at the land section here, we can see that we have primarily very thick forests with some pockets of land for each player to build up and boom. Um, we have connections between the players over here, between teams, and then from each team to the other team across the river. Uh, some connections can be a bit thinner or thicker than others, but overall the map has a very closed feel to it once you get past the river. So here's the map in action, and this video is going to be focusing on how to make this map. So um, let's get started. So here we are in the editor with a blank map, and let's get to the coding. So first off, as always, we're going to need our player setup. In this case, it's going to be a random placement. Our land generation is going to come next. So to start this map off, we're going to create the player lands and separate them so that the river is in the middle. So to get the river, we'll set the base terrain of the map to be shallow. And then we'll create our player lands here. We'll have this be a ground terrain, so terrain type grass two. We want it to take up in terms of land percent a hundred percent of the land, but we're going to set zone by team and then other zone the zone avoidance distance of 15. So we can see what that does here is it creates our map with that shallow river in the middle. So that's basically how you can create any map with a river down the middle. But now we have to think about how we want to create the black forest aspect of it because we can see a black forest map here and the way this is constructed is by having the base terrain of the map be wood and then having the player lands be a ground terrain with a land percent that is less than 100. So right now we have a bit of a situation in which we've already specified the land percent of the player lands to be 100% so we can't at the same time have it be less than 100 um, to get a defined base size for each player. So um, this limitation is going to require us to be a little bit more creative with the way we do our lands and terrains. So um, let's try and think about what we can do. So let's go into a terrain generation section. And we want to create the thick forest, so we'll create Terrain, which will be jungle. Base terrain is going to be grass 2. Let's have it take up 100% of the area. And then number of clumps will be very many. And then we can try something like set. Set avoid player start areas. Because this would give us a bit of room for each player. But when we take a look at how much space this allows for each player to boom, we can see that it's not very much. And we would r much rather prefer to have a larger area available to us. So let's think about some other things we could do. So instead of having the player lands be grass 2, I'll call it um, 
dirt. And then instead of creating jungle, I'll create grass 2 on top of the dirt. And so we can see right now that we just removed our forest terrain and now the dirt is highlighting where the player lands are going to be. But after we do this, we can try something else with the jungle. So we can place jungle on top of and then we can instead of set avoid player start areas we can say spacing to other terrain types so if we do that if we take a look at this uh, land over here we can see that this um, particular player's base is having a much more room in order to do stuff with so that's good but um, at the same time the fact that we use that spacing other terrain types attribute means that the forest is also staying away from the river, which is not something we wanted to achieve with this particular map. So um, we got to think about how we're going to get, um, fix this particular issue. And before I get too far along, I should probably give the player lands a base size. We'll call that 11 to keep them from spawning too close to the edge. So um, right now we're focusing on trying to make it so that when this jungle terrain is avoiding the dirt, which is representing where the players are gonna start, that it's not going to avoid the river in the middle. So let's just pretend for a second that instead of the base terrain of the map being shallow, the base terrain of the map was jungle. So without the terrain generation section in, we can see that the map looks like this. And then if we bring back the terrain generation section, we can see that the map looks like this. We can see that the jungle is avoiding the player start areas, but it's not avoiding the middle river because basically the middle river is gone. And that may seem like a pretty counterproductive step, but bear with me. So. Instead of differentiating the middle river based on a different terrain, we can differentiate it based on an elevation. So if I say base elevation of the player lands is one, and I also have to make sure that there's an elevation generation section in here. Let's see what this does for us. It may be a little hard to see on the minimap, so let's go and replace some terrain here. Okay, so now we can see that even though the terrain of the map is homogeneous all the way through, aside from the player lands, we can see that we're still able to distinguish where the river is supposed to be based on the difference in elevation. We can see where it starts here and where it ends here. And we can use this later on to bring the river back um, after we've played around with some other terrain things. So um, moving on, um, let's talk about elevation for a second. So the fact that uh, we still have a differentiating terrain between uh, this middle river and the player lands means we can specify a certain terrain for elevation to generate on if we wanted. So we'll, oops. Create elevation three. Base terrain on the map is gonna be dirt. Number of tiles is gonna be 2,500, number of clumps, 24, we'll set scale by groups, and then also enable balanced elevation, which is just an attribute that um, combats um, bias that would otherwise occur towards the bottom of the map if you had uh, many tiles present. but. Anyway, we can see that we can have elevation on our map that doesn't generate um, on the middle here. It only generates on the player lands. And then we can bring back our 
terrain generation section. And we still have our elevation. Okay, so now moving on with the terrain generation section. Um, the land that we have cut out for the player's base is not going to be the only land that's present on the map. We're going to give it a bit more. So we'll create grass 2 on top of jungle. The land percent is going to be 35. Number of clumps, 8. Set scale by groups. And to make sure that this patch of grass is going to generate on top of the player lands and not in the middle of the river here, um, we will use height limits. 1 to 7. And so since the middle river is at elevation 0, this particular grass patch is going to avoid generating in the middle. And we are able to pretty much see that here when we can look over here this is pretty much representing where the river is supposed to be because it's at a lower elevation um, than what we've specified. And then to make the forest a bit more irregular, let's have another create jungle statement on grass 2. That still works. Um, land percent, we can have that be 5. Number of clumps will be 12. And then it doesn't we want it to avoid the player lands, but we don't necessarily need it, need it to avoid it by seven tiles, so we'll just reduce that to three. Now the forest looks a bit more irregular, and now that we've done all this, we can start to bring the river back. So what we can do is we can create terrain shallow on top of jungle. Um, take up all the area, and we'll make height limits for this be 0, 0. So now, since the river, where the river is supposed to be, is the only place where the elevation of the jungle terrain is going to be 0, we can see how this works here. And so now the next step is to create some patches of water um, within this shallow river um, for uh, places where we can put fish later on. So we'll create terrain water on top of shallow. Specify land percent as 1, number of clumps 12. Um, Set scale by groups, and then we'll have a spacing to other terrain types attribute of one here to make sure that the water is not going to be touching the edge of the river here. So that's uh, one water statement, and what we'll do here is create medium water on top of the shallow, and in addition to avoiding the edges of the river here. That medium water is also going to avoid the normal water because of that spacing of the terrain types attribute. And we can see we have some isolated patches of water and medium water that still make sure that there is going to be many crossing opportunities for land use to get from one side of the river to the other. And then to make it a bit more homogeneous looking, we can then create more water on top of medium water. Take up all the area. Don't need this. So after we generate this, we can notice that there are still some patches of medium water left over that our statement did cover. This tends to happen when we have many individual clumps. So what we could potentially do is copy the statement a couple more times to try and cover more of that area. So that does the job reasonably better, but there are still um, st some isolated patches of medium water left over, but that's not too big of a deal. It's not gonna prevent us from making docks anywhere. 
So with this done, there's just a couple more things left to do in terrain generation. So let's keep generating some maps here. And we can notice that in some situations that um, based on how randomly the grass patches tend to spawn, it can leave some players with a bit less wood than others. So we'll try and make some other forests to try and compensate for that. So we'll, instead of creating jungle right away, we'll create leaves and have that be the base terrain grass two. Land percent, we'll call that um, five. Number of clumps, eight. And then spacing to other terrain types, we'll give that an attribute of, we'll call it five for now. And we'll generate this particular seed map to see whether this player, how it's going to affect this player here. So we can see that since we generated as leaves, it's now having to avoid the regular forest. So it's going to spawn in open areas uh, rather than uh, closed areas. But it seems like it's spawning a bit too close to the players here. So we'll increase that terrain and then lower the percent slightly. So to create some forest for this here, and then we can cover up those patches of leaves with jungle. Create jungle on top of leaves. And so now this player is not um, totally without wood as he was before. Um, so now that that's done, we can cover up the remaining uh, patches of dirt with grass terrain to make all the ground the same. So let us create grass two on top of dirt. So those dirt patches went away. Um, and then next what we can do is Let's create a few patches of regular grass on top of jungle. Call it five percent for clumps, spacing to other terrain types. It's gonna be five, and this is just gonna create some isolated pockets within the thicker forest, like here. And then we can cover up that grass. So it was set to grass so it would avoid the grass two that's on the outside here. So next we'll cover up the grass that's in the middle with grass two. Top of grass. It won't look much different, but there you go. And then what we can do next is we'll just create a few puddles of water around here just for a nice aesthetic effect. So we'll create some water, base terrain grass two. We'll have number of tiles. This is gonna be pretty small. So we'll call that five, number of clumps, five. And then spacing to the terrain types, we'll give that an attribute of three. And now keep in mind that since this is a water terrain and that we're generating it on top of a grass terrain, that this spacing of the terrain types attribute will also keeping it from spawning too close to hills. So that just gave a few puddles there. Actually, we need to make sure we're set avoid player start areas also. Okay, so we just got a few puddles there. So, um, and then just the last thing what we're going to do here, let's we'll create um, dirt on top of grass too, uh, like 7%, seven, 7 clumps. And then we don't really care if it avoids anything. What are we doing? Dirt on top of grass too. Oh, land percent. 
so there we go. And I think that about does it for the terrain section. So next we're going to be focusing on connections. And then when we're doing connections, let's think about what we're trying to do here. So there can be situations in which we can see basically a player's base here and the next player's base here. Um, we would want a connection between there. Uh, some players can be connected inherently with the way terrains were randomly spawned, but then there's also situations in which this player would be separated by the river and we want to create a connection there. So um, let's go to the connection generation and then we'll do first we'll do create con connect all lands. We could have used create connect players lands, but since right now the only lands are player lands, it doesn't really make a difference. So first we'll re replace terrain jungle with grass 2. And then the terrain size for the jungle is going to be a width of to an variance of zero, and then the ter terrain cost of jungle is going to be three. So let's take a look at that and see what it does. So previously when the um, players were separated, now they're connected there, and then this player obviously got connected um, to the river by those connections also. Let's see if we can see a connection plowing through this area here. So now that we've connected the players, let's create a road between the teams. So the road in this case is going to be is terrain 39. And then we can create connect Teams, lands, and then we'll replace terrain grass two with IP. Any jungle that may pass through, we'll also replace it with ivy. It can pass through dirt also. And then the terrain sizes for all of these for grass two is going to be one zero. Same with jungle. Same with dirt and then also we'll have a terrain size for the road itself and that's going to be zero zero and then for our terrain costs for jungle we want it to be relatively high because we want it to avoid going through the jungle we want it to uh, prefer to go through the pass that we've created first so Jungle is going to be relatively high. And then the grass and the dirt are going to be relatively low. So we'll call that three, three for grass two and dirt. We also want it to avoid going through the river here also because it could potentially try and go through that. So the terrains on the river, you know, these are supposed to be cost. For water, and then we have shallow, and then also beach. We also have to consider that. So we'll have it prefer to avoid the river by giving it a higher terrain cost than the ground. And then lastly, the terrain cost for Ivy, which is the road itself, is going to be one. 
So let's see what that did here. So we can see how it created the road. Actually, we'll, we'll include leaves in here as well in case there's any left over. So leaves, and that's going to behave just like any other of our ground terrains. We have leaves here also. So we can see it has created the road between teammates. So with all that out of the way, all that's left to do now is the object section. And that's not, there's nothing particularly special about the object section in this map, so I'll just copy that over and briefly go over what, we, what we're seeing. So we basically just have the town center, villagers, and scout. We have our immediate resources here. The food resources here are actually a bit higher than a normal map. So we have uh, very many sheep. We have two patches of berries. We have three boars. And then we have little bits of shore fish around here. Uh, that can generate on those small tiles of water that we generated here. And then we have a bunch of fish in the middle also. So uh, I think that's about it for how to make this map. And I guess the key thing to take away here is how we were able to create a defined area for each player um, without having to rely on anything related to land generation. This was all done with terrains. So um, that's about it. And if you're interested in playing this map, I'll of course leave a link to, in the description where you can download this as well as all of my other numerous maps. So um, until next time, that's about it for me. So thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something.